Yeah, it seems since it was Thursday, it seemed like uh, two weeks ago, but uh, I'm just not. We, um, you know, just addressing that game again. Uh, go back and look at the tape. I think there was probably four plays on defense where we gave up. I bet it was combined 120 something yards on four plays. So obviously, I continue to work on not getting up big plays, but obviously very uh, pleased with our defense up to this point. Uh, you know, the Memphis game with South East Louisiana game, our defense has uh, done some, some good things as far as uh, uh, our scoring defense. So very pleased with that. Uh, you know, offensively, kind of a, like I said last week, a, mu a muddy game. You go back and look at the tape. It's never as bad as you think or good as you think. You watch the tape, the old coach's cliche, but, uh, you know, it was a guy here or there. And uh, like I said, some of it was us, some of it was, uh, you give Southeast Louisiana credit, but uh, some, a lot of work we got to get done before we go into conference play this week. Uh, you know, addressing Austin P. Um, you know, you don't get fooled. I mean, you see the record, but you know, West Kentucky won loss, and they just beat the uh, University of Kentucky. Uh, you know, an SEC school, so that's a quality opponent that they lost to. And then you see them uh, losing Virginia Tech, who uh, you know may not be the Virginia Tech of some of the years that we that we've seen, but they are in Virginia Tech. And so, uh, you know, I think you take those two losses out of it, and then basically they're just 0-1 against Tennessee State conference game, uh, a game which they had the lead. Um, what was it, 14-9 or? Something like that. It took them to late in the third quarter before Tennessee State got the lead. So uh, I think it's your typical Austin Peay teams to where, uh, just like last year at, the, at home, they beat East Kentucky and Tennessee State to uh, start the conference play up 2-0. Two, two oh. So by no means do, um, you know, are we, are we uh, you know, overlooking them to get the EKU next week? I mean, that's, somebody asked me that earlier today. you got to be kidding us. We, we haven't won enough conference championships around here, and that's not how you prepare each week. So with that, I'll answer some questions. Coach, you mentioned Austin Peace. They've had some struggles against quality competition. You know, a fan might look at it and think, you know, you know, right. like some three lost at scores. What have you seen on film or heard or, or right. what are you aware of that? You know, might give, might give you some trouble. Right. Well, we certainly watch, you know, watch tape since, you know, since Friday, so we know what we're looking at. They line up, uh, first and foremost, they line up correctly on defense. I mean, they're an eight-man front. They're balanced defense. You, uh, you're you not going to get any big plays. I mean, you're, the only way you get big plays is if they miss tackles. Besides that, they're where they're supposed to be. You can't out-leverage them. Uh, so they're well so they're well coached. Uh, you know, offensively, uh, you, you've got a junior quarterback, a guy that's played a lot for him, you've got a quality back, and you've got, you know, one of the top two receivers in the league. Uh, and that receiver can beat us. We talked about this morning staff meeting. That, that receiver, uh, you know, you get it uh, to, you know, one possession game, and he's, he can make a play against anybody in this league. So we've definitely got to know where he is. We're going to have to have some different things prepared. Uh, but that, though, that was concerning watching them take uh, the last couple of days. You think you'll be able to control the line of scrimmage? Uh, you know, I don't think we're. Austin, the way you do against, uh, you'd always like to think that I'd rather score fast, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. But each game changes. You know, I'd rather go out there and have have a bunch of big plays. But like I'm saying, this, you you know, they they if they make the tackles, you're going to line up and play second seven. And so, uh, you know, yeah. We didn't play very good up front. I'm, I'm, I, this is a game for us to kind of uh, reestablish ourselves as an offensive line. But watch that tape. We didn't push anybody around consistently. We fit some blocks up, but you know uh, we were standing out. We were standing up with our knees locked down. Nobody was bending their knees. Uh, yeah, you may get a plus on the play because you went to the right place, but you were not imposing your will, you know, on a guy that didn't want to get blocked. So um, you know, I still got some question marks about that. To answer your question, are you pleased with the time of possession? Yeah, anytime you can, you know, control the ball that long, that's great. Uh, you know, but I would I live with scoring 40 points and have it 28 minutes. <laughs> you know, uh, we didn't turn the ball over, so, uh, you know, that's kind of what you should do, to be quite honest with you. We not turn the ball over, but, um, you know, you say great if that was your game plan going in, is to keep the ball away from them. I don't necessarily know that that was the case, but, um, you know, we need to start scoring some more points. We need to have some bigger plays on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, uh, ready for our defense to score. Our defense, uh, they're getting turnovers, what they have the other night, two. And then they got three, two, and two, right? Is that what it is? Three, we've got seven turnovers now. It's time to, you know, to, to scoop and score. It's time for the, for the um, you know, interception to get run back uh, for a touchdown. So that's the next step. Coach, speaking of, uh you know, score and more one. And I know that with all the conference games starting to come up, every score is really important. Um, do you 
you have a strategy like for your special teams? Because I know it's you know Sandlin hasn't really been delivering since he's three for eight. Like, what's your strategy there? Right. Well, um, you know, you saw it the other day. I mean. You know, the guys build up some credibility, but eventually somebody else has got to get an opportunity. And, and the only reason I switched kickers during that situation was more the holders than it was actually the kicker because, uh, you know, we got left footed kicker and right footed kicker, so they both got different holders because that's a, that's, there's not enough time for one guy to work both for. So once I saw Neil fumble the snap, I went ahead and made the change and went with the um, Sandlin and, and um, Satterfield as a holder, and, and, and then luckily he made it. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe they got him going because they made his special points after that. And maybe, that and maybe that's what it needed, but, but that would cost us. I mean, you, you know, eventually it's going to come down to that. And he may want to get Memphis, but uh, you know, I can't dwell on too much. I mean, uh, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a skill set that uh, he's been kicking for a long, long time. He knows when he hangs one out and what he did wrong, but you only get one shot at it most of the time. So. Um, you know, but it will affect you, like you know, as you're alluding to, is that when you start, you know, thinking, okay, let, let's go for it here, and not take the points on the board. Um, you know, so if you don't get those first downs, you left points out there. But if that's what we got to do, it's what we have to do because, uh, you know, you got to give us some opportunity. Do you think uh, the alarm being able to kind of establish its will a little bit more, or? or you know, even become a little bit dominant, is that the biggest key to score more points? Yeah, well, um, you would think so, but I, I'm not so sure that's who we are. Uh, we're still looking, even though it's three weeks, because um, you, the offense either goes one or two ways. You either dominate the line of scrimmage with your tight end and your fullback, and you get nine guys in the box, and then you throw it over the top of people and make plays. And we've, we've had some years that were like that. Or, uh, you know, you throw first, and then you get those six-man boxes, and there, and then you rip off your big runs from there. We're kind of in between right now, and everybody that watched our tape kind of kind of see that. Uh, and, it, and some of it depends on the flow of the game. Some of it depends for injury. Uh, you know, we we're really playing with one tight end right now. We're playing with uh, uh, you know a new fullback. So we're kind of still deciding, believe it or not, what what we are. Now there is some there is some um, you know the bright side of that is is that. When you play, when you play us, you don't know exactly which direction we're you know we're going with the game plan, or because we've got some different personnel packages. But um, you know, my preference is to be is, is that you're the old saying is we want to be able to run it when you know we're going to run it, and we want to be able to throw it whenever we want to. So like I said, we're kind of in between right now. Injury wise, I mean we're we're in decent shape. John Johnson, one of our one of our left guards has got an MCL issue. Uh, he kind of be a game time decision. He'll probably, you know, we'll see what we can get out of him this week. Hopefully, we get Butler back. Um, besides that, we're knock on wood. We're in good shape defensively. Um, and then, like I said, just getting Johnson back, we'll go from there. But he came out probably like 15 plays into the game. The tops went in and played. Uh, played the rest of the game there. In, uh, in previous years, has there been something at Austin P that makes them stronger? Is it just a typical home field advantage? Or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've lost two and we're five and one against them, and uh, we had to lead 14 nothing. They beat us. Do a great job. Um, you, you know, I think the you, you never, never, never uh, underestimate their you know tenacity. They're going they're going to play hard. They're never they're never going to give up. Uh, you know, you have to make sure that you're aware. Of that. And I hope we have that same uh, you know that same reputation as well. Okay. Um, so, you know, for us, hey, it's the first game of the OBC. You can't get the 2-0 until you win the first one. It's the next game for us. Uh, try to put back-to-back -back wins together. Uh, I mean, there is, there, there is, uh, you know, uh, an immature team would, would, um, you know, not have them ready to play this week, and I don't think that's the case. Also, the first game in the Sergeant Mark Series for the year. Yeah, no question. And, and as you know, you can't, you know, you're not going to the league unless you win the Sergeant York Trophy. Uh, you know, you got three opportunities here in the league, and uh, this is the first one of them. We won it two years ago, and we had to give it back last year, so uh, that wasn't a whole lot of fun. For those that don't know, it involves the four teams in the conference. 